So we have again changed positions and are enjoying the beautiful view on the landscape of Lower Saxony. I have my next interview guest already next to me, but before we start with the talk, we would like to show you a very fascinating piece of technology, which for sure is the Fusil. So let's discover more. Here is where it comes from. And here is where it is needed. Hydrogen. Oxygen and hydrogen react to produce water and electricity. That's what happens in fuel cells. A fuel cell is the heart of the train. Well, these fuel cell systems were actually developed in Canada. Um, Cummins acquired a company called Hydrogenics that was based outside of Toronto and Mississauga. They've had 25 years of fuel cell development, and so it, for the past eight years, they've been working on developing this system for rail. While technically challenging, hydrogen also offers many advantages. It's incredibly light, so it can be massively compressed. Hydrogen can be easily stored and transported, but more importantly, Hydrogen is an enabler to the circular economy because it produces neither waste nor emissions. I think all of the railways um, are interested in decarbonizing their uh, operations. And when you don't have electrified tracks, that proves challenging. And so that's the great thing about fuel cell, uh, fuel cell trains. You don't have to have electrified tracks. You can convert, use the existing infrastructure. And in fact, it, they fuel very similarly to a diesel train in the same amount of time. You can fuel the uh, train up in 15 minutes. However, you get a lot of the benefits of um, an, an electrified platform. So it's a fuel cell electric platform uh, in, in that it's quiet um, and that it's a comfortable ride for passengers and that it doesn't emit any CO2. Green hydrogen can be produced and stored wherever it is needed, and it can be produced anywhere in the world. All you need is sun, wind, and water. Let me now present my next interview guest to you. His name is Stefan Schrank and he is an engineer at ISOM and he really knows this topic off by heart and he is so passionate about it and I'm really looking forward to have a, a talk behind the scenes because Stefan um, has so many years of experiences and he was traveling with the prototypes around Europe. He also witnessed the ever-growing interest of hydrogen so now let's go behind it and talk more. Hi Stefan. Hi. Good to have you. Thank you. So please tell us, I just mentioned it, that you spent a lot of time uh, actually with the, with the trains. Yes. So what was your first contact with the new hydrogen trains at Alstom? Um, yeah, it was about uh, nearly 10 years ago. Um, I, I had left Alstom one or two years earlier to, uh, to, to look for a new opportunity at a, at a supplier. And then I had a contact with my former boss somewhere in the evening. We had a dinner together. And he told me he had an idea uh, with, with another colleague. Um, why not to introduce a new way of propulsion for the trains instead of diesel, hydrogen with a fuel cell? And he asked me if I wouldn't be able to come back for this project to Alstom. And I, yeah, more or less really said, yes, that's something that I would like to do. And this was my first contact for, to this idea. Since then, a lot happened. But yes. please tell us, how crazy do you have to be to think that different? Um, I, I do not really, if it's to, to be crazy, you just have to, um, you, you, you must be, you stick to a fascinating idea and you have to have the idea to, yeah, that's really something that could go and this would change, I would not say the world, but would change the operation in railways a little bit. And uh, yeah, that was what was drive, drove us in the whole team, in a small team in the very beginning. And since 2014, when we started with a big team, this, this was our motivation. We, we will change something on how people will look on, on railways in the future. And do you remember maybe one special moment where you first really realized it's not a concept anymore, it's, it really has a lot of potential? Um, I, it, in my own opinion, it, it was really with the first time when I, had this, uh, I heard of this idea. I, I was uh, totally convinced that we will do this. 
However, uh, the first two years were a lot of work on, on concepts, on business cases and so on. And nearly one and a half year later, after a lot of business cases um, presented to external funders, presented to our top management, when they all said, oh yeah, I think it's really, and then we said, now we can go more, when we had the okay from external funders and from our top management. I said it at the very beginning, we really want to look behind the closed doors, yeah. um, um, so backstage. So what were the biggest challenges in those 10 years? Um, one of the biggest, or I would say the biggest challenge, is the fact, or was the fact, that there were no rules, no regulations, how to use hydrogen in fuel cells in railway. Everything is regulated in railway, but nobody has thought about using hydrogen in fuel cells, and there was, therefore there were no regulations. So when, we, when Alstom announced to develop such a train, our first way was not to look for a partner for fuel cell and tanks and so on, our first way was to go to potential external experts who can witness and who can assess this new technology because there were no regulations and we have to make our own new regulations and that was the biggest, the biggest challenge in the, whole, in the whole idea. So what was it like? So in those 10 years, were you always determined that everything is going well and that one day we're sitting in the train like we're doing now? Um, in fact, we had not the time to think about this. Um, we, we, I, I remember one evening when I sat with my, with my technical manager of the project, we were the only ones in the office, we said, oh, we're doing something wrong because at this late time we're in the office. On the other hand, we thought it's really, it's, it, it's really something where we are, should be afraid of how fast everything is going. We are just not really thinking, we have a challenge, we, we think about alternatives, we do, and we go on to the next step, and therefore, yeah, it was not the time to think about if something can go wrong. It, it, we just made and we always find a solution, found a solution. And today we're really about to, to break a record. We are going through whole Germany. So do you have also a special relation to the route that we're traveling today? In fact, in fact, this is a route uh, a little bit south of our, of our factory, the home of this train. And when in, in, in summer 2018 we had the um, uh, homologation uh, achieved for the pre-series trains, and uh, it was announced that the pre-series trains should start regular passenger service in, 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 in September 2018. We used the three months in advance to go with these trains twice, three times a week on a public track to check if they're really ready for passenger service. And most time we took this quite lovely and, uh, 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 route here um, south of our, our factory and we tested, we go twice, three times a week to, 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 to run this train here. Okay, so I also mentioned that you were traveling through Europe and present the new prototypes. Yeah. What, uh, which countries do you preserve very, to be very keen on this new technology? Um, in fact, we, we have this seen from a lot of countries. Um, you, you must see um, a lot of countries have the same situation as Germany, that we have uh, a, a significant part of the tracks are not electrified. Um, and we have seen a lot of interest, for example, from the Netherlands, where we had uh, a three weeks uh, 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 operational test run, so we really simulated the operations in the Netherlands. We had in Austria uh, a four months regular passenger operation with these trains. Um, also, also in Sweden, we had a very, very good presentation in Poland, in France. Uh, um, just this year, we made a good presentation in the Czech Republic for two weeks, mm -hmm. traveling all over the world, uh, all over the, the country. Um, so we see a lot of interest in Europe, and in fact, there are also requests uh, abroad from Europe, uh, uh, Australia and Canada, wow. uh, requesting to have pre-series trains to run there. That sounds great. Stefan, thank you so much for giving us further insights. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And now we will enjoy a little further the beautiful landscape here and um, I hope you're doing so too because we have six outdoor cameras so that you are also having the chance to see the landscape. We will see each other later with new content.